Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. My name's William, this is a set of course of competition, and today I'm gonna to be driving the Alpine A110 GT4 around Spa. I'm gonna have a hot lap for you, as well as the setup I used, uh, setup I've been tinkering on for uh, quite a bit of time now, uh, a couple days now, trying to uh, get it competitive and a little bit drivable. Uh, the aggressive preset was just not great for me, so, Hopefully, if you guys give this a shot, it'll be uh, at least better <laughs> at least better than that. I definitely think it is. Um, as always with this stuff, guys, uh, thank you all so much for your support. And if you do like this, want to see more of it, give the video a like. It does help me out a ton. If you want to see more, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and get on into the hot lap now. And then I'll be back to kind of talk to you guys through the setup as well as uh, giving you some adjustments and tweaks you can make. Uh, to it to potentially be more suited to your driving style. Anyways, on to the hot lap. Enjoy. Alright everyone, that was a hot lap around Spa in the Alpine A110 GT4. You can see the time here was a 230.456. I am absolutely stoked with that time as uh, this took me a couple days and my and my first day with my first running on the aggressive preset, as I do in basically every car, um, I managed a low 235 and did not think I would have a chance at a mid 230. I thought maybe a low 231. Uh, by the end of the first day, I knew I could get a low 231 for sure. Um, and possibly, possibly could see a 230. But wow, over the aggressive preset, I, I really did not think that was going to be possible just with how uh, difficult. I mean, it was nearly impossible to carry any kind of speed through a rouge on the aggressive preset. And just other other areas of the track I, I knew it was going to be a struggle especially since this car is a little bit slower in the straight line as well um, but nevertheless I got the time that I was I was kind of aiming for and I I'm, I'm quite happy about it I'm have my sector times here 
for you to compare to if, uh, if that's something you want to do. Uh, whether you need to find some time or uh, tell me where I am slow, it is uh, there for you to do what you want. Um, we can go ahead and get on into the setup now. I did start with the aggressive preset, as I said. Um, if you want to experience that pain and suffering, uh, you can try that. Um, if you don't want to, maybe start here. Uh, just just my, my personal take on it anyways. Um, we'll go ahead and start actually with the rear of the car for this, uh, this page. Um, just a little over 26 PSI hot is what I was aiming for, so um, tune for that depending on what kind of conditions you're running in, how long of a race, uh, any, anything like that. This is, this is uh, kind of the pressure I would be aiming for. It was about 26.2, 26.3 PSI. Um, you can definitely go up to you know 26.5. I wouldn't go any higher than 26.5 though. Uh, rear of the car felt really good uh, around that tire pressure. Um, for the front, it's a little bit of a different story. Um, the front tires have a very hard time holding temperature, and because of that, they drop pressure. Um, I did find one workaround for that, but I, I, it's only really good for one lap, so maybe something you can try and use in qualifying. If uh, Ultimately, I think it'd be, it wouldn't be worth any time anyways, but... Um, Nevertheless, I'll, I'll talk about that whenever we get to it. I, I think what this car needs is like a Mercedes DOS system, so you can actually work these front tires and and maybe get them up to temperature. But alas, uh, uh, we don't we don't have that in, in this little thing. So, um, and I, I did try a number of things like increased camber, a lot of toe, all this stuff to really try and work these front tires, and it just could not get it to work. So. Uh, uh, actually, speaking on that, the front toe on this car, the reason I kind of had it nulled out, well, actually, that was the point I was going to make. Yeah, 27 PSI. <laughs> 27 PSI is what I would be aiming for. Hot tire pressure on the front of the car. Uh, but you are going to lose some tire pressure, so uh, I wouldn't fret too much about um, keeping your tires exactly in that golden range. And uh, and just try and kind of keep them in a range that you are happy with, uh, you know, somewhere in the 26 PSI range. Um, and, and don't go too crazy with it as, uh, as it, it can get quite frustrating. Um, on the toe on the front car, I zeroed it out just because um, this car can get a little bit oversteery in the middle of the corner and on initial turn-in. So just trying to take any of that out of the front of the car uh, from a, a, a suspension point of view uh, was what I was going for just to increase the drivability of it. Um, and then also just kind of talking about the differential between the front camber and the rear camber. It's about, uh, it is 0.4 uh, degrees right now uh, difference. Uh, so 0.4 de uh, degrees less on the rear than on the front. Um, it felt like a really good balance and compromise for the entire track for me. But if you do want to focus on a little bit more uh, cornering grip, you can try and um, add more negative camber to the rear and uh, kind of decrease that differential. Um, alternatively, if you want to work on acceleration or are, are struggling somewhere in there, uh, you can uh, increase that differential and take some negative camber out of the rear. I would leave the front where it is just because uh, you're going to get pretty darn good braking performance out of the front of the car, in my opinion, with, uh, with this kind of camber on the front of it. And since this car is a little bit down on straight line speed compared to some of the other GT4s, you really need to maximize your braking zones and uh, also your acceleration zones. Put the power down, get up to speed quick, slow down quick, all that good stuff. Uh, obviously carry the speed through the corners as well, and that's why I settled on uh, this balance specifically. For the electronics, I was running the TC on one and the ABS on one. Uh, for good track conditions, they feel good to me, but um, they're pretty personal, so if you wanna mess with them or need to because you're on different conditions or whatever, uh, there's there's not so much TC there for you to play with, but you do have a lot of options available to you for your ABS. Uh, brake pad compounds, front and rear, is on four for me. It just seems to be what I'm liking on these GT4s. There's only four of them, uh, so if you want to test them and uh, kind of find out which one you, you uh, get on with better, uh, you can go for it. But uh, my personal preferences for these cars are brake pad compound two and brake, ca uh, brake pad compound four. Uh, for this. Uh, so if you only have time to try two or something like that, uh, maybe give those two a shot. For the suspension side of things, 
Uh, we'll go ahead and knock this out kind of step by step here. Anti roll bar setting three and zero for the rear. This is primarily for Eau Rouge, just improved the drivability a ton for me through there. Uh, made it to where I could comfortably carry more speed through Eau Rouge. Um, my brake bias, I always, almost always, I did increase it one time, almost always decrease this over the aggressive preset. Um, I will say, and kind of give you a range, I think uh, you are losing out a little bit of braking performance, not getting the car to stop as quickly on the uh, default. I think it's like 61.2% or something around there is what it came on. Um, other than that, it's not a bad it's not a bad setting at all. You are just going to give up a little bit of braking performance. Um, and ultimately, I think once you get down to around 59% to about where I wound up here, 56.8%, uh, you are getting that good, solid braking performance. So if you want to increase it over where I have it, uh, absolutely go for it and feel free. Um, alternatively, if you want to lower it more, uh, you can definitely go for that as well. Uh, it's a little bit of uncharted territory for me as I, I didn't try as many settings lower. Um, I did go quite a bit lower and really wasn't a fan. So, uh, But there's a lot of adjustability in the brake bias of this car and uh, it's it's one of those pretty personal settings as well, but that's my opinion on it nonetheless. Um, see, for the wheel rates on the car, um, this is just to try, so slightly slightly uh, softer on the front than the rear, uh, just because of the, uh, the weight distribution really on this car is kind of wonky, but um, ultimately I think uh, the wheel rate on the front being a click lower, this uh, uh, 72,500 setting, is the faster setting but it is less drivable so i went ahead and bumped it up one and that's why i'm on this one is it just felt more controllable more drivable more predictable um but i do mention that just because if maybe you're setting up a specific qualifying set or something along those lines you might want to try the slightly softer front just to give you that extra little bit of uh, front bite and front grip out of the car and, uh, and see if you can maybe try and tame it. Uh, for the bump stop rate, uh, this is all for, um, uh, as you crest the top of a Rouge uh, Radion, that kind of area, all the, where the car really starts to bounce. This is just to try and make that bouncing, it's going to happen, that bouncing is going to happen in this car. And trying to make it predictable and controllable, which I think it is, I, I could feel the car bouncing, but never, had the thought of um, uh, not being sure what the car was going to do or afraid I was going to lose the car uh, in that area of the track because of it bouncing. Um, let's see, the preload on the differential as well. So this is kind of a tough one. Um, I wanted to increase it a little bit more to try and take out some of that corner entry oversteer, um, but ultimately it adds a ton of mid-corner oversteer by going much higher than this. Uh, so I thought maybe if I lowered it and got the mid-corner oversteer out, I could uh, tune out the entry oversteer some other way. I was unable to. Um, so realistically, I had to kind of find a balance of controlling the entry oversteer, but trying to limit the mid-corner oversteer as much as humanly possible. And uh, that's kind of the setting I wound up on. Um, I could have really gotten rid of the mid-corner oversteer if I went lower, but then I am uh, kind of sacrificing some of the performance on corner exit on uh, some of the corners around this track. So as with everything with these setups, it's a bit of a compromise, and uh, that's kind of where I wound up. So um, yeah, like I said, if you want to take out some of the mid-corner oversteer, you can try lowering the preload differential, but you will increase the corner entry oversteer. Um, if you want to decrease the corner entry oversteer, you can uh, increase the preload, but you're going to add mid-corner oversteer and corner exit oversteer at that point. So uh, there's a slightly better way to do it, and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. For the dampers, here are my settings. I'm not going to talk about them because they don't really uh, make too much sense to me, but this was basically what I had to do to actually get the car to uh, not feel like it was falling all over itself uh, any time um, there was a, a massive weight transfer going on. I think it has something to do with uh, 
with the weight distribution on the car and just uh, some of the lack of adjustability that you have uh, in these GT4 cars. But nevertheless, there they are. Not saying they're perfect, but that's uh, that's about where I got to actually make the car feel like it wasn't, uh, like I said, falling all over itself. On the aero side of things here, um, I wound up on these ride heights for Eau Rouge specifically. Um, the differential between the rear and the front is, I think, uh, the most drivable though. So the ride heights necessarily, they would probably be lower if we didn't have to deal with Eau Rouge, but I still think I would have the rear um, about, uh, what, four millimeters lower than the front of the car um, just for the drivability. It gave me also uh, increased the rear wing to two uh, you're already not going that fast in the straights, and it improved. It, it, it allowed me to carry more speed through Eau Rouge, which ultimately meant I was actually going faster at the end of the Kimmel straight. Um, so, you know, add more wing, more drag, but you carried more speed through the corner, so you actually end the straightaway at a higher top speed. It was worth it for me. Um, and then anything, in pretty much anything under 108 millimeters, the rear of the car bottoms out on the uh, compression as you start to climb the hill in Eau Rouge. And uh, you can kind of tell the difference in this car, especially when the rear bottoms out. The car kind of goes into a half spin um, almost immediately. When the front bottoms out, uh, the front basically just stops steering and you just kind of slide across the track. The front just stops turning and just slides across the track. So if, uh, if you need to tweak your ride heights for some reason, that's kind of the characteristic it's going to have. Um, if you do want to... Uh, decrease the oversteer from the car this would be my suggestion just increase this front ride height by uh, one or two millimeters and see if that kind of solves your problem um, and then the the thing I was going to say about uh, front tire temperature if you do really 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 for some reason need to keep front tire temperature in the car for one lap um, run the front brake duct on zero that's basically the only way I was able to keep uh, the front tires at a uh, good operating temperature and kind of hold on to their pressure because of it. But ultimately, just run the fr run the front brake duct as closed up as you can for whatever temperature temperatures you're in to try and really hold on to that heat in them. Um, but yeah, anyways, that's the setup. Uh, I hope you guys like it. I hope uh, I hope if you have tried out the aggressive preset, uh, maybe this is a little bit better for you. I it definitely was for me, so I hope it is for you guys. Um, if you do, give it a try. Let me know how you get on with it and, uh, and, and what you think in the comments below. As always with this, um, I, I appreciate your all's support so much. So if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, give the video a like. It helps me out a ton. And uh, subscribe because there will be definitely more of, of these setups uh, for all the cars here in ACC and, and different tracks as well. So um, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.